Hey guys, what is going on? Jurgen from Zerg Reno Sports here, and today I'm coming at you with the WWE 2021 Fast Lane uh, prediction slash preview video. Um, it's coming out a little bit late on the Saturday, later than I wanted to, uh, but uh, a friend of mine was in town, so uh, you know, whenever he's in town, we kind of take the opportunity to you know hang out, play ball, all that shit. So a little bit busy throughout the day, but. Uh, I am back at it with the video, you know what I'm saying, with this predictions video, man. So, uh, yeah, man, um, I'm just going to be using the WWE.com match card. Uh, they The match card has been kind of changing all week. Um, so, in a, in a sense, it's good that I'm doing it, you know, kind of at the latest possible point because you know, knock on wood, nothing will change, I guess, from here on in, um, in the match card, but then again, they could pull a match like they did with Asuka at Chamber 30 minutes before they went live, but, you know, it is what it is, so, um, on WWE.com, they are showing a seven-match card, which does not feature Shane McMahon and Braun Strowman, however, I will just talk about that quickly to start things off, um, because that's not an officially announced match, even though they announced it on SmackDown, but it's not on the WWE pay-per-view, I don't know if they can't decide whether or not they want to do it, and it's actually legit whether or not they're pulling it, or if this is another tactic to get Shane heat, where it's like, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna advertise it on TV that the match is gonna happen, but guess what it's not official and then maybe Braun will show up and be like yo Shane what happened to the match and then and then you know uh Shane will come out and be like yo it got pulled Braun I don't know man stupid or something which will be awful and once again not help anybody in the feud so hopefully they don't do that um you know what I mean? I was thinking that they might do um, some Dabakato stuff and then have Dabakato and uh, and and Braun at Mania, but uh, I, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think we're actually just going to see Braun and, and Shane at Mania, which is going to fucking stink, brother, but that's for the future. So, um, yeah, I don't know if they will have anything like that. If they end up actually going ahead with the match, I think there will be Dabakato interference, and then that'll set up Dabakato and Braun at, the, at, at Mania, unless they repackage him and give him a new name or whatever but you know um other than that i don't really care about that feud i if it doesn't happen the match i'm fine it's gonna be a shit match if it goes ahead anyways so i don't really care uh so on to the official match card as per the wwe website at around 9 p.m on saturday the 20th the day before the show we have uh, the first match scheduled as Mustafa Ali versus Matt Riddle for the United States Championship. Um, Mustafa Ali asked for a match without uh, Retribution getting involved or something so he can show them what how it's done or something like that. And then the match got announced. So th the way they announced the match, eh, kind of whatever, but it is what it is. So... Um, I would like to see Mustafa Ali win the championship. Um, you know what I mean? Riddle just isn't connecting with me. I've tried to like the character. At the very beginning, in the Raw reviews, I was saying like, ooh, I like these little short comedy segments, but they got old really quick, and they're just kind of like that's your U.S. champion, you know what I mean? Because it's not like a Big E, like, aha, uh -huh, having fun, and then in the ring it's serious, because with Big E, he's actually funny, he's actually enjoyable to watch when he's doing the loving life thing. With Riddle, it's just, you know, beating you over the head with stoner humor, and it's like, brother, we get it, he smokes weed, what else? You know what I mean? So him as the full, obviously he has the personal stuff which people hate him for, and that's 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 there as well. But just looking at him from the in-ring, from the on-camera, from the, you know, in-character kayfabe full package, he's not resonating with me. He's not hitting. His matches have been good when he's been given time because, I mean, the guy is a good wrestler. It's just the whole package isn't there. So I'm not really on board with Matt Riddle. Um, I am on board with Mustafa Ali. I'm not on board with Retribution because they book them like shit. But Mustafa Ali specifically, I think, really could benefit from the U.S. Championship. Um... So, I mean, you, you can go either one of two ways, right? You can go, you know, Musfa Ali winning the championship and then showing Retribution how it's done and then maybe they finally start being booked seriously and then they start winning matches and then they start being serious after Musfa Ali kind of set the course. You kind of have that way of looking at it as an outcome. That's one of them. And then the other outcome is Musfa Ali still fails, Retribution turn on him, and then they go their separate ways kind of thing. Um, and, like, I, I would like to see Musfa Ali win the championship, 
Um, personally, just because I think he he's really good um, and he's kind of been shackled down uh, the whole time he's kind of been on that roster. So, um, yeah, um, in terms of a prediction, um, I think maybe we'll see Riddle retain. Um, and then maybe, I, I don't know, this one's kind of weird because it's like, I mean, Riddle isn't hot at all. He's got no heat. He's got no momentum. But neither does Mustafa Ali. Mustafa Ali has a lot of potential to have a lot of heat and momentum behind him. But will they fucking capitalize on it? Probably not. Um, So in terms of an official prediction, I really... I don't really know. I'm going to go with Mustafa Ali just, you know, um, cautiously, I guess. Um, ah, But then again, Riddle just won the title after Lashley held it for so long, do you really want to hot shot the title like that? Ah, uh, fuck, I don't know. This is, this, I feel like they always make the first match on the website the one that's like 50-50, and then so people who do predictions can fucking rack their brain for a little bit. Um, but let's see. Um, uh, in terms of an actual prediction, I'll go with... Um, hmm... I fuck, man. I'll go with Riddle as an actual prediction because I I could see them breaking up Retribution. I I mean, they created Retribution, let's be honest, to to capitalize on the riots and shit back in June, July, something like that. I think that was the timeline. I don't really know the fucking all of the COVID, all of this first year with COVID because it's been officially a year now has kind of seemed like 18 million years. So I I can't really pinpoint a lot of shit, but the, 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 riots and protests that were going on around that time i feel like that's why they made retribution because vince was like yo let's capitalize on that so since that time um granted i don't know how they were booked before i started watching besides people telling me they were booked like shit but since i've been watching they've been booked like shit so i'll go with riddle i'll go with riddle as my official prediction i'd like mustafa ali to win the championship but my official prediction will be riddle to retain um and then maybe uh retribution kind of turns on mustafa ali or something like that um then we have shinsuke and nakamura versus seth rollins um i i hope we get a clean finish to this i hope these guys just get like 20 minutes to just fucking go and give us a banger because i mean like shinsuke is incredible seth rollins despite being a very annoying human being is an incredible wrestler um so and i'm not just talking about the messiah gimmick i'm just saying as a human being he does not seem like somebody i would personally get along with but um that has nothing to do with the wrestling you know what i'm saying so yeah man i mean if these guys get given time they're gonna fucking maybe steal the show maybe have the match of the night maybe have the match of the year contender you know what i mean so um yeah, granted, I don't know if they would be able to top uh, Pete Dunne and Finn Balor, though, because that was fucking incredible, that match. But anyways, um, I feel like Seth is the only logical winner of this match because Seth, um, he's just coming back. He hasn't had a match since coming back. You'd think that you want to keep him strong and then, you know, have Cesaro be the one to beat him at WrestleMania. But then again, on the on the flip side, you could have Cesaro kind of like make an appearance, distract him, and then have Shinsuke beat him, and then and then Seth kind of add that on to the ways that Cesaro is disrespecting and humiliating him, or something like that. You know what I mean? He could be like, "Oh, at Fastlane, I had Nakamura in my grasp. So I was about to win, and then who else but Cesaro to come out here and and humiliate me again? Blah blah blah. I want to teach you a lesson at Mania. There you go. You could do it that way." Or you could do it in the way that Fastlane happens, Seth wins, and then, um, you know, maybe he does a post-match beatdown on, on, on Shinsuke. Maybe Murphy gets involved to, you know, give Seth the win, and then you could do Seth and Murphy versus Cesaro and Shinsuke at some point in the uh, in the buildup. I don't really know. Um, granted, Murphy realigning with, with Seth would be fucking ridiculously stupid because they built up him, you know, breaking out on his own for, like, what, six months or uh, maybe longer, and then, you know, but... Vince doesn't know how to book him, so if it gets him on TV, I'd I'd, I'd fucking I'd just be like, okay, fuck it, whatever, man. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. You know what? I was thinking that this was really simple and that it'd be a Seth win, but they could really do the Cesaro kind of like gets involved, not not in a heelish way, but in like a Seth's trying to cheat way, and then Cesaro's like, hey, nah, uh, and then Shinsuke wins. You know what I mean? The only thing stopping that in my head is like, you know. Seth's going to lose at WrestleMania, hopefully. If they, if they have Cesaro and Seth at Mania and Seth wins clean, that's just 
the company saying fuck you to the fans directly. Um, but, you know, uh, we'll see. But I feel like you'd want to give him a win in his first match back. But then again, there is the story potential of Cesaro, quote unquote, costing the match. He doesn't even have to cost him. He can just prevent him from cheating. And then the, the heel can spin it as, oh, he interfered and cost me my match, even though he didn't directly cost him, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know what? I'm going to change my, I'm going to change my, I, th- I think, you know what? Uh, you know what? Um, logically, I do think that maybe the safer bet is uh, Seth to win, but I'm going to go with old Shinsuke Nakamura, man. I'm going to go with Shinsuke Nakamura for the win with maybe Cesaro stopping Seth from cheating. And then Seth can kind of build that into, you know, wanting to um, reprimand, I guess, Cesaro. Um, so yeah, I, th- I think I'll do that actually. Um, Now that I think about it, granted, the safer bet, I think, is Seth winning just so he has a big win before Mania to keep him strong. But, you know, at the same time, WWE loves interference finishes or something like that. And there's nothing wrong with them. Um, Just uh, WWE loves to do them, I think, a little too much, maybe, is is what the problem is with WWE. But whatever, that's not really the point. Um, Yeah, you know what? I'll say Shinsuke. I'll say Shinsuke. Um, Then in the next match, we have Randy Orton versus Alexa Bliss. This one is one that can go two ways. Obviously, that's very obvious in terms of wrestling match. One person wins or the other person wins. Granted, three ways because of a draw, but whatever. Uh, Granted, four ways if it's a championship match and there's a money in the bank holder because then they could, you know. But anyways, um, Randy versus Alexa, I think, can go one of two ways. Alexa gets possessed by the fiend and then kills Randy Orton, right? That's one way and Alexa wins. Or the other way is Randy beats Alexa, has her in a position where he's going to burn her or something and this time he won't hold back or something like that or he's going to really hurt her. Boom, lights go out and then the fiend kind of interferes. The only thing I have with that is I don't want to see the fiend yet. I, I would like them to hold off the reveal of The Fiend fully until WrestleMania. I'd like our first full look at The Fiend to be WrestleMania. I think maybe if you do a shot where it's like a zoom in on like maybe one of his gloves, maybe he has a new saying on his gloves now because he had to get new gloves because they got burned or something. You know, maybe he has a zoom in on his gloves like saving her or something or maybe a zoom in on his eye so you only see a little bit of the new mask but you see a little bit of whatever it is. You know what I mean? I just, I don't want a full on fiend reveal just because then at mania you're just kind of like okay it's it's fiend versus randy we already know what fiend looks like right but if you really want to build up to mania you can you know hint at what the new fiend looks like um so you you could do something like um it's not main eventing uh but you could do something like you know like Funhouse Bray appears in the ring in between like Randy and and Alexa and he's like please don't stop don't do this to her and then uh, Randy's like fuck you I'm a I'm a burn both of you now and then lights go out and then they come kind of back on and then you could do like a thing where you're behind the fiend so you only see his back you don't see his front and then you see Randy kind of like freak out and then cut to black maybe kind of thing um it's it's a little bit cheap and it's like a cliffhanger which you know cliffhangers in 2021 and any types of media you know the 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 era of the cliffhanger has kind of passed you know what i mean in the 80s 90s you know acceptable but like it's 2021 but still um yeah i don't know because it's like I just, I don't want to see The Fiend yet. I want them to hold off the reveal, the full reveal of The Fiend. Maybe give us a little glimpse here and there um, in the Raws leading up to it. But like the full reveal of The Fiend, I want them to save for Mania so we can fully see what he looks like at Mania. Um, unless they do a Firefly Funhouse match, then you don't really need the full reveal of The Fiend. <sighs> but because you'll have, uh, I don't know. Um... I'll go on and say that Randy wins. And then we'll have like maybe some feet. Then again, do you think we'll have some cinematic bullshit that we'll see Randy RKO Randy or something like that? Like, do you think there's a way that they could do that? Because it's not like he's Undertaker or anything where you can have like a duplicate Undertaker because you got, you know, the mask and all the garb on. It's like it's a man with very noticeable tattoos and a very noticeable face. You know what I mean? So you need like... If he had a twin, that'd be good. Like, they did some shit with Eric Angle on uh, SmackDown back in the day where Brock, like, beat up Eric Angle and then Kurt kind of blindsided him in, like, 2003 or whatever. But, like, um, 
Yeah, I don't know. Because uh, I feel like it is so... With Seth, you can kind of like, whatever. You know what I mean? About him losing and then that can build the story. I feel like you need Randy to get a win here, right? Just because like he's had a lot of matches he's been screwed out of because of Fiend or Alexa recently. Um, uh, so I feel like you kind of need to give him a win here. Granted... A win against Alexa Bliss for Randy Orton. Not to say anything poor about Alexa Bliss or anything, but it's like, it's not a convincing win. It's not a win that elevates you in the rankings or something like that, but it's a win on the record book. And if he does it dominantly enough, it kind of puts him over as a sadistic person. And then maybe you have a sadistic Randy against whatever, uh, against Fiend or whatever. So um, I'll, I'll say officially for the winner of the match, I'll say Randy. Um, granted, again, they could do the Fiend possessing Alexa and then beating Randy, uh, but I don't think they'll do that. So, um, yeah, I'll say, I'll say Randy for the win officially. I don't know how they'll have the Fiend involvement, but he has to make some sort of, uh, appearance somehow. I just don't, I just hope it's not the full Fiend re, repackaging, I guess, like that with the new look and stuff like that, right? I just hope it's not the full fiend. I just hope it's a glimpse or something like that. And then we get the full fiend reveal at Mania. But uh, yeah, officially, I'll just I'll say Randy for my prediction to win that match. Then we have a match that literally doesn't matter because they they didn't make it a number one contender match. It's Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus in an old holds barred. Um, it's going to be a good match. It's going to be these two beating the absolute fuck out of each other for probably a long time, so it'll be a really fun match, um, the only problem is, they made it worthless, unless they do a big old swerve, have Drew lose, and then have Sheamus be like, yo, he has the Mania match, but I beat him, shouldn't I have the Mania match, and then, and then Pierce will be like, oh, shucks, Sheamus, that makes a lot of sense, triple threat now, and it's like, oh, okay, whatever, but then again, if you do a triple threat, you can protect Lashley and getting the title on Drew. So there are benefits to having Sheamus get into the match to make it a triple threat. Because I don't think Lashley should be pinned. And it's a way to get the title off Lashley without making Lashley look weak. And then he can beat Drew for it at the next pay-per-view, whatever, right? So you could have that going for you. Um, that's They might do that, though. You know what I mean? I feel like... Cause like I, when, whenever I've seen like anybody, whether it be like certain wrestling channels talk about it, or maybe just on Twitter, they're like, Oh, why did you not just make this a number one contender and postpone the announcement of Drew versus Lashley a week? And like, if Drew ends up winning and he just gets a win on the way to mania, um, you know what I mean? Then yeah, that's a valid complaint because I have the same complaint. However, if they do have Sheamus win so that he can weasel his way in, because if, if, if you really think about it, Drew has a win. They had a no contest. They could give Sheamus the tying win and then have Drew pinning Sheamus in a triple threat be the blow off of the match, right? So, um, I think there, I think the possibility of Sheamus winning and then inserting himself into a triple threat does make some sense because I don't think Drew, I don't think that WWE title match is main eventing either night. I think women's title is main eventing night one and then Roman and uh, and uh, whoever he faces is main eventing. Um, wait, that's not how it works. The, the universal title match, I think, is going to be uh, night two's main event and the SmackDown women's title is going to be night one's main event, I think. So, um you know what? I'm, I'm going to say that Sheamus is going to win. I think they'll do it. I think they'll do the Sheamus win to involve him and include it in a triple threat. And then, you know, Drew pins Sheamus at Mania, protecting Lashley, and then Lashley wins it back at uh, fucking whatever the pay-per-view is after Mania these days. I don't know the names of the pay-per-views anymore. Whatever used to be Backlash, the, uh, the April pay-per-view. Or wait, no. Mania is the April, April pay-per-view. The May pay-per-view right? No, because Backlash used to be end of April and um, Mania used to be like first week of April, last week of March. I don't know, whatever. The post-Mania pay-per-view, the first one, Drew Lashley can win it back after not getting pinned in the triple threat. I, You know what? I'm going to say that Sheamus is going to win. I'm going to say that Sheamus is going to win and they're going to do that. I, I, I'm going to say that Sheamus is going to win. They're going to insert him in the match, make it a triple threat, bada boom, bada bing. Um, 
I think, I think them announcing it is kind of a bit of a smokescreen to get people upset and be like, oh man, Drew's going to win and go on. Why not make it a number one contender? The reason they don't want to make it a number one contender is because they wanted a triple threat and they wanted an easy way in because it would make sense that way. So I don't know. Um, I, yeah, yeah, I think, I think, you know what? Yeah, I think, I think the Sheamus is going to win. I really do. I think Sheamus is going to win, get inserted in the match. So uh, I'll pick Sheamus for that one. Next up, we have uh, Big E versus Apollo Crews. I am I am going to predict neither man wins. Um, I'm going to predict a count out of some sorts, whether it be both of them being counted out for a 10 count in the ring, like they both hit something big, like maybe a superplex or something, and they can't get up. Maybe they do a double uh, step spot like Sheamus and, and, and Drew did, and then they both get counted out kind of thing. So you can play on the steps that Apollo used um, in his heel turn and all that shit, um, or maybe like a ring out count out, you know what I mean, where it's like bada boom, bada bing, and the reason I think that this is going to happen is because I think they need a specialty match at Mania, right, and with Big E saying that pinning Apollo is not enough, he has to maim him, he has to hurt him, he has to break him, whatever he said in that big incredible promo from a couple weeks ago, um, or last week, sorry, I, I really think that they're building to like, maybe not a last man standing, but maybe an I quit match or something like that. And I think that you need that at Mania because that would be incredible because I think, you know, Big E's great. This new Apollo is so fucking good. Um, and I think they, they deserve a Mania match. The only problem there is that you cannot have Big E win here. Because Big E has won, what, two or three title matches with Apollo where Apollo was face teetering on heel. And then you can't just have newly repackaged Apollo just lose to Big E and just be like, hey, I demand another shot again because you changed your attitude. You still didn't win. There's absolutely no fucking reason for you to get a title shot again, right? So, um, I think that what they might do is like a double count out either in the ring off of a big move or a double count out outside the ring uh, where neither, neither of the men answer the 10 count to get in or get up or whatever it is. And then, um, and then from there you could be like, you know what, uh, Big E can say, you know what, I didn't get a, you know, convincing enough beating on you. I want another match with you. Apollo could be like, yo, like you didn't beat me to retain the title. If we both lost, you know that means you're not champion so vacate it or give me another shot or something you know what i mean just like a promo and then you could lead to them having an i quit match or something um because biggie again said that pinning apollo is not enough in the in, in the exceptional promo that he cut last week so um I think my official prediction for this is going to be a draw slash no contest slash whatever. Just a just a non like a, a, a neither of them is going to win. Um, I think, and then we'll and then we'll build to a to a you know a stipulation match at uh, at WrestleMania between the two. Um, and then at that point, I don't know who would win honestly because I feel like Big E probably needs a big Mania win on his singles run at his first Mania, unless the story that they play at the next Mania is him winning the Rumble and then being like, "Listen, I let myself down last Mania, my first Mania in my singles run, and I lost. This year, I'm not going to lose again," kind of thing. Because Apollo. Honestly, I wouldn't be mad at them putting the title on Apollo because Apollo's fantastic right now, in my opinion. So, um, they, yeah, they, they, both of these guys, honestly, could I, I wouldn't be mad at either of them having the title. Uh, I just think that they should save it for Mania if they will switch the title over or if they will have a definitive clean finish over Apollo. So, um, yeah, I think my official prediction is going to be some sort of no contest maybe they'll maybe they'll do the cheap thing and do a dq finish or something like that but i think a no contest would be better because that way no man gets the win or the loss and then bada boom bada bing you go on to mania you do that ting and then they will have a great match at mania i think um hopefully i quit because we haven't had an i quit match in a while and we had a last man standing at royal rumble so we've had one of those fairly recently but an i quit match would be good so uh yeah man I think my official prediction is a draw slash no contest kind of thing. Um, then in the next match, we have the Women's Tag Team Championships, Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax defending against Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair. Now, again, there's two ways that they could go from this from a storytelling perspective. Either Sasha and Bianca win the championships going into Mania 
um, so they can do the Shawn Michaels HBK thing, or Sasha turns heel on Bianca, and then and then they and then you know Nia and Shayna. Um, retain the championships it depends on what they want to do at mania because if they want a women's tag team title match at mania then you kind of have to put it on you have to have you know Shayna and naya retain so that they can defend it at mania right uh unless you want you know bianca and sasha to lose them on like the go home smackdown and maybe bianca sorry sasha can turn heel on the go home smackdown or something like that maybe 2 weeks before just because you cut you you would want a heel promo from sasha after turning heel on bianca kind of thing um they're, they're, it looks like they're going to do the rookie and the veteran kind of thing with, with Sasha being the veteran and Bianca being the rookie. You could do that either way. You could do that as cha- co-champions or you could do that as, you know, Sasha turning heel on her or whatever. Um, personally, I think that they're going to win the tag team titles just because you kind of... Then again, Nia just took a loss, so she's going to take a win because 50-50 booking. Um, a protected loss, might I remind you, because Sasha Banks can't retain her title successfully clean before losing it to Bianca at Mania. So good job, Vince. That was that was a brilliant idea. I'm being sarcastic, you old fuck. Um, but uh, yeah, man. Um, eh. I'm, g- I'm going to go with Bianca and Sasha winning the titles, I think. I think I'm going to go with Bianca and Sasha winning the titles. I think maybe we might see Sasha kind of let Bianca do it on her own kind of thing and then start taking credit for coaching Bianca, maybe something like that. And then Bianca could be like, what the fuck you mean? Like, I did all that shit on my own. You didn't do shit there, veteran, coach, whatever. And then and then she could be like, nah, see, whatever. Um, and then... And then maybe they could lose them in a couple weeks or something. The, you know, there's there's an argument that you're devaluing the title by just having a quick, you know, title change for the story. But those titles don't mean shit. Those women's tag titles don't mean shit, especially after NXT got their own. So those titles are dead. So who cares? Um, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I think my official prediction for that will be Sasha and Bianca winning the tag titles, uh, but it could very easily go the other way with Sasha turning heel. I just feel like four weeks of heel Sasha promos might be a little bit overkill to get to Mania. I think the dynamic of them being friends who are low-key hate each other kind of thing, I think that's a better dynamic for the Mania match with the veteran and rookie stuff, but you could do it with a full heel turn this early. I just think it would be better to prolong the heel turn and then, uh, and yeah, you could even prolong the heel turn until like, you know, Bianca and Sasha wrestle at Mania, Bianca wins, then they have a title retention like the next night on Raw or on SmackDown or whatever, and then they lose because Bian- uh, Sasha turns heel and then you can build to the next pay-per-view for Bianca's first title retention and then you could move on from there, right? So, um, but I think I'll predict Sasha and Bianca winning the titles for this match right here. And then in the main event of the evening, we have Roman Reigns versus Daniel Bryan for the Universal Championship with Edge as the special guest enforcer. Um, This one's kind of weird because this is another match where they could try and make it a triple threat. Because if you think about it, what the fuck is Bryan going to do at Mania if he's not inserted into this match? And what the fuck is Roman going to do at Mania if he loses this match and loses the title? Which he shouldn't, by the way. Roman shouldn't even lose a Mania. Roman should hold that until Cesaro's ready to win it at SummerSlam. I'll say that I, I feel like I've said that a lot lately because it's, it's, it's the truth in my opinion. Um, but uh, yeah, man, it, it, this there there's, has to be some sort of like screwy finish here. There has to be. Um, it, there has to be some sort of shit where... Like, maybe Edge fucks over Brian because he wants the match with Roman so bad. And then Brian's like, yo, I want Edge on SmackDown right now. And then Pierce is like, okay. And then maybe Brian beats Edge. And then uh, Brian's like, see, that's why Edge didn't want me winning the title because he knew that that would happen. And Mania, and then Pierce could be like, ho, oh, let's insert you into the match. I would say, hey, you can't really do that two times in a row. But uh, they had the same build for WrestleMania 23 for both t- uh, both uh, world title matches. It was, hey, let's Let's team up. Hey, I'm going to turn on you, but you don't know when. And then, you know what I mean? So um, they've done a similar kind of thing before. So I think that they could do that for this. Um, but uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. I really, I really don't know, man. 
I really don't, because like without Brian somehow finding a way to get involved in this universal title match, what is he going to do at Mania? Really, what is he going to do in Mania, right? Because like he has no other storyline to go into and we're, we're three weeks away, man. We are three weeks away from Mania, I'm pretty sure. Um, so you have three weeks to build a Daniel Bryan match, unless maybe they want to do like a six man ladder thing for the intercontinental title. And then Bryan sneaks in there or something. But again, I'd rather them prolong uh, Biggie and Apollo to an I quit match or something at mania and let them have the singles match. Maybe the U S title at mania can have that six man ladder treatment if you want, whatever. Um, but yeah, man. Um, I really there's there's going to be shenanigans of some sort. I think we'll get some uh edge stuff for sure where edge maybe like pretends he didn't see something that he really did see or something like that. I don't know. I like you you can't have a clean like pinfall or submission win for Brian, right? So that's out of the question because you need to keep the title on Roman. Um but maybe um, they they could do a little something with with Brian actually making um Roman tap and then Edge looking at it and being like, "Sorry, Brian," and then like kicking him in the face or something like that. I don't really know. Um, that way you could play off of you know Brian and Roman with Roman saying, "I'd rather die than tap out to a man like you," and then Brian being like, "Hey, I mean, you guys saw last week why neither of them want me in that picture." You know what I'm saying because. I beat I beat Roman, he tapped, and then Edge didn't want that at Mania, so he ducked me, and then I beat him last week or something as in a promo if they do Edge and, and Brian um on a SmackDown. So I think um I don't think they'll do like a DQ finish or anything like that, just because I you know, main event of the show, it's not the attitude era. I don't think many people really want those kind of DQ finishes, um, but like shenanigans finish to the point that it, it you know, it um, extends a story, I think is okay. A shenanigans finish for the sake of a shenanigans finish is bleh, you know what I mean? But like if it starts a story or extends a story or builds on a story for the long term, I think it's fine. So um, I'll go with a Roman win, right? Officially. So pin or submission. But the asterisk there is Edge will willingly not count a fall or willingly not count a submission um, by Brian. And then that way Brian can beat Edge in a singles match to get inserted into the match or something like that. Um, So, yeah, man. Um, Yeah, so I'll say Roman as official prediction just with the caveat that it's not going to be a clean win. It's going to be, you know... Edge is going to fuck over Brian. And then, you know, the the stuff with Brian beating Edge to get inserted and stuff like that, maybe, maybe it'll happen, maybe it doesn't. I think it makes sense that it would just because Brian literally has nothing else to do at Mania if he's not involved in this feud. So uh, you kind of, you, you kind of have to have him there in a sense. But um, yeah, man. Yeah, so Roman for the win with Edge's interference and then and then potentially a triple threat for the Universal title at WrestleMania between these three. So, uh, yeah, man. Uh, that is my predictions for Fastlane 2021. Um, unfortunately, that the you know, it's unfortunate that the show exists because it's a big road bump onto the road to WrestleMania. But, um, Big old pothole in the road to WrestleMania. But, uh, I mean, the card should be good from an in-ring standpoint. You know what I mean? I mean, we've got some really good shit in here, man. We've got Riddle and Ali, who, if they're given time, they should have a great match. Uh, Shinsuke and Seth, if they are given time, they should have a good match. Um, Randy and Alexa won't be like a technical, you know, Chris Benoit versus Eddie Guerrero masterclass or anything like that. But, like is going to be good from a storytelling perspective, I think, because I like the Fiend stuff. Most of it, some of it kind of fell flat for me. Um, Sheamus and Drew is going to be fucking great. Um, Biggie and Apollo is going to be good. Uh, the tag match won't be that good if Nia is in it a lot. If it's Shayna kind of being like the sole person for Nia and Shayna in the ring, and then Shayna just mixes it up with Bianca and Sasha, it'll be really good. If Nia's in there a bunch, it'll kind of stink a little bit, but you know, it is what it is. And then, I mean, you know, Brian and, and, Brian and uh, Roman in a full-on match is going to be good so 
Yeah, man. Um, I think in ring, we're in for a good card. I think booking wise, it could be a good card. Um, you know, l- overall, it's 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 dampen it's um worsened wrestlemania because the overall build for wrestlemania is worse as a result of them kind of fucking around with the card and shit but like you know the wrestling should be good tomorrow night man the wrestling should be very good tomorrow night so i'm excited for that um and that is my previews man let me know what your predictions are down in the comments uh if you'd like to join the discord server the link will be in the description we have a watch long audio channel in there so everybody watches it and then you're kind of in the same audio channel to just talk to each other um you got to watch it on your own you got to find your own way of watching it but i mean like we react to it in there so yeah man uh, uh twitter's also in the description please sponsor me pc gotta get that in there um you know what I mean? Check out my other shit. Check out my gameplay stuff. If, if, if you're new to the channel, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I do wrestling gameplay stuff primarily. Um, especially my GM mode series because I book my own storylines for those. So if you want to see how I'd book the wrestling, you can head on over to those series. Um, be sure to turn on notifications so you never miss an episode because YouTube likes to zuck your boy. And I'll put my videos in your sub boxes. So by pressing the nice old bell icon, you will get a push notification anytime I do upload and you'll never have to miss it. And um, yeah, man, I hope you guys enjoyed the previews. Like I said, leave down what you guys thought as well. Uh, like, subscribe, share to all your friends, all that good shit. And I will see you guys next time.